Tonight we'll be you know, uh, studying a portion of Paul's letter in the Ephesians. So if you have your Bibles with you, let's open it to Ephesians 5. We'll be reading from verse 1 up to Sawa, no? <laughs> up to, probably up to 7, or we'll see. We'll, uh, we might extend a little bit more. But to start with, Philippians 5, oh, Ephesians 5, 1 to 7. It says, imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, as a pleasing aroma to God. Verse 3, let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Seven, don't participate in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. So live as people of light. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. Pray, Lord, for your Holy Spirit, O God, for wisdom that is made available for us. We pray, Lord, for revelation knowledge like Christ, O God. I pray, Lord, that uh, you'll be able, Lord, to receive your word, Lord, and learn from it, O oh God, and uh, we'll grow in faith, Lord, and know you more as we study your word. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Book of Ephesians is, of course, written by Paul. Uh, it's one of the prison letters. Uh, Ephesians, it's for the churches in Ephesus. Okay? Um, Ephesus is a, one of the centers of the Roman Empire. Uh, it's where the temple, the it's said, it's said in the scripture, the seventh wonder of the world. So the, uh, Diana is pretty much worship in this, in this place. So it's an urban thing. It's a uh, center of commerce. And Paul is writing a letter to these churches. Uh, if we look at his uh, journeys, I think Paul visited Ephesus twice. First, where he planted a church, and then second, where he stayed there for a long time. But uh, one interesting thing with uh, the book of Ephesians is that there is a lack of uh, personal, uh, uh, so, some lines pertaining to specific people, which is uh, very much a characteristic of Paul's letter. Sometimes Paul will mention letters, say, hey, be careful of this person, oh, thank, person, thank this person for this, or send my greeting to this person. But the book of Ephesians somehow lacks all those details which tells us that one of the purpose of Paul for this letter is for it to be a circular letter, a circular epistle. What do I mean by that? It should be sent to churches in Ephesus, received by a local church, and then transferred to another, and to another, and to another, which is practically what we're doing right now. So um, as we study, imagine we're the next recipient of this epistle. Uh, Paul's letter can be divided into two, not the Ephesians. First, it talks about a lot about doctrine. Uh, so it talks about Christ, salvation, the body of Christ. And then the second part talks more about application. So Paul is like saying, now that these things were done to you, now that you are this in Christ, now that you are a body of Christ, what are you to do then? No, then uh, it is under an umbrella of living in the spirit or, or, or living in the light. That's a major theme of this verse. So in verse five, Paul starts with imitate God. Imitate. To imitate is to mimic. Uh, we have kids, they like mimicking. Uh, they like mimicking to the point of being annoying. Like they'll follow what you say. You know, you know, kids will tease each other that you tell them, you stop, and then they tell you, in the manner that you say, you stop, but keep on mimicking. 
uh, at one point, uh, my, my son, uh, Renmar, um, he, t- he took a ladle. And then, I'm cooking, I'm cooking, I'm cooking like daddy. I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> so that's what he sees in me because I was the one cooking in the house. Or sometimes he'll wear a white shirt. He's like, I wear a white shirt. I'm, I'm, I'm like daddy. So mimicking actually is not a general concept of being the entire person, but following a specific aspect of a person. Okay, so to mimic God is to show portions of who God is. It's not like, okay, mimic God, like be like God, like the creator of the universe, the one being worshiper. Rather, we should be imitating um, facets of you know, certain portion of who God is. Um, actually, the desire to be like God is pretty much in human nature. What do I mean by that? Even unbelievers, they desire to be like God. Probably, oh, really? Uh, uh, take, 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 for example, the quest for power. Okay, you know, all this conquest, all this conquering of establishing kingdom, widening territories. They want to live out who God is, the God who is powerful. Same with wealth. Probably you'll say, oh, it's driven by worldly things. But actually, being wealthy, the desire to be wealthy is to be like God who owns everything, whose resources is very much unlimited. Right? Even unbelievers, a lot are into philanthropy. They give, they help the poor, they, they want to be like God who is compassionate, who is merciful, who is helping people, who are blessing people. So even unbelievers, there's this tendency. They want to live out who God is. Okay? This can be traced by, uh, traced from the very beginning in the creation. Man was created in the image of God. Okay? So that uh, complexity, that, that, that being man which is created in the image of God, even though it fell, it has still the desire of acting out what he is designed to be, to be like God. Okay? So, Paul is saying, imitate God. It seems an impossible task. How can we imitate God? However, imitation, not just imitating God, just as I illustrated earlier, is likewise pretty much a part of us. I mentioned about kids imitating. If I'll ask, probably when everybody, if, if I ask, when you were young, do you have a dream? What, who do you want to be? Always, there's this, uh, I want to be Superman, or I want to be Spider-Man, or I want to be the President of the United States. Um, I myself, when I was a kid, probably second grader, I want to be an astronaut, because it's cool to be somebody in space. Huh? So we, we tend to have, to create a model as to who we want to be. And unfortunately, however high or big a child's dream or a person's dream is, it will ultimately fail. Because oftentimes, our pattern is, our model are are likewise people who have their own limitation. Um, We take as models politicians or athletes or actors and actresses. Uh, In the kitchen circle, we, uh, some of our models are or preachers, or evangelists, or great men in the scriptures. However, even though how godly these men are, they have still some imperfections. And the moment we set our mind into imitating somebody, a person, it will ultimately fail. Uh, Just in the news, a few weeks ago, a few months ago, a lot of things are happening in the Christian church. Some leaders are being found out to be this and that falling short of the expectation of who they are supposedly be. That's why uh, even though Paul is saying to imitate me, what he's pointing out is imitate me as I imitate Christ. So ultimately, our uh, source of inspiration as to who do we want to be, it should be God through Jesus Christ. So first, imitate God. Uh, 
As I've said earlier, it's, it seemed to be a, it's simply an, an impossible task. However, God has done a lot of things in us. How he created us, how he saved us, how he is working in us for us to be able to be like him. So first, God created us to imitate him. Uh, the reason that Paul commanded, no, Paul issued his command, imitate God, that means it's not impossible for us to imitate God. Okay? Um, we think of God as all-powerful, omnipresent, omniscient. Ooh, omnipresent, can I imitate God? Probably I can be in different places, right? But God as who he is can be imitated. In fact, he created us to imitate him. So, uh, we are commanded to mimic God. And the way it was phrased, if we look at carefully, it says, imitate God. Therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear, uh, dear children. Take note of the therefore. Uh, therefore, there could be referring to things before, like what God has done, what Christ has done, what Christ has built the church to be as a precursor like, that God has done this, therefore, you are, uh, be, be imitator of, of God. Uh, first point, it says here, you imitate God in everything you do because you are his dear children. Okay, we are to be imitators of God first and foremost because we are children of God. As I illustrated before, Kids tend to imitate their parents. If truly we are children of God, it will be natural for us to imitate him. Amen? Okay, it will, it's natural for us to uh, have this awe and, oh, oh, this is God. Just as when we were little kids, oh, my dad is so strong. He's so tall. He's so good. In, and then we tend to copy who our, 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 our parents are, our father or our mother is. So we imitate God because first and foremost, we are his children. Okay, so we are created by him. We are made in his image. We, we got lost, man got lost, but God has purchased us back. So actually, God has this kind of ownership. Uh, God owns us in so many ways. He didn't just create us. He likewise purchased us back. Okay? So, uh, and not only that, God chose to adopt us, not just as his people, but as part of his family. That's why we are called the children of God. So as children of God, God is expecting us to be like him. It's a tall order, but... It is, as it is in the scriptures. Take, for example, Matthew 5, 48. It says there, Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We all know human is not perfect. But there is still this call to, hey, pursue perfection. You may not achieve it, but pursue it still. Okay, that's why, us in Lion's Heart, we have this vision of being Christ-like. Okay, it's kind of impossible in this flesh to be totally be like Christ. However, we still are to pursue Christ-likeness. Okay, so as we grow, we continually become more and more like Christ. As we grow in our Christian faith, we are becoming more and more perfect. We are becoming more and more like God. So be perfect because God, who is our Father, is perfect. In First Peter uh, 1, 15 to 16, it says there, be holy because I am holy. Now, because just as he who called you is holy, so be holy. So all you do and all you do, be holy because God is holy. So these are just some examples. There are a lot of other cases wherein God is saying, hey, be like me because I am this. The second um, Observation here is in the scriptures, Paul is saying not just you are, not only that you are children of God, 
Okay, it says here that we are loved by God. Um, in other versions, I think it's CSB, or, there's this phrase of dearly beloved, dearly beloved. You are loved by God. And this is a very important uh, truth for us to live out if we are to imitate God. Uh, going back to the illustration of a child, a child will naturally imitate his father or his mother or her mother, yeah, her daughter. Or daughter. However, if a child, say a son, hates his father, he will do all the opposite things. That's why in family there are those who rebel. Because I don't want to be my dad. There are those who run away. I don't want to run that business. I don't want to end up like my father. The very root for that is that that child never felt to be loved by his father or for a daughter to be loved by her mother. So what I'm trying to point out is it is, we have to know that we are loved by God for us to naturally imitate him. If we know that we are loved by God, then we know that imitating him, obeying him to imitate him is for our good. Okay? Uh, that is why it's always a struggle in our Christian walk for us to be deceived that, hey, God doesn't care. Remember, probably, think of an incident in your life wherein uh, there's a big loss. Like, ah, there's this temptation that makes us think, oh, God, God did not care. Um, take the case, for example, of, of Adam and Eve. When Eve was tried to be uh, deceived by the serpent, what is Satan's argument? You know what? It's just that God doesn't want you to be like him. You know what, if you eat this, you'll be like God. But you know what? I'm paraphrasing, of course. But you know what? God doesn't want you to be able to know things that he knows. So he's withholding you of this ability. That's why he is not allowing you to eat this food. Okay? There is a doubt being put in us that God doesn't love us. Take the case of Job, for example. Okay? For the case of Job, uh, the strategy of Satan is for Job to take away all that God has blessed him with. Those blessings are expression of God's love. Remember when we, leave, we, we receive other things, oh, God truly loves me. But by Satan taking away all the good things in Job's life, it's like saying, that, hey, God is taking back. Huh? From being loved by God, you are now hated by God. Okay? And then the goal of Satan is for, for Job to ultimately uh, denounce who God is in his life. So always a battle in us is the, the, the struggle of, of, am I really loved by God? And uh, if we truly uh, analyze that question, it's a slap on God's face. Because you know what? God has done a lot of things. However, because of certain weaknesses, because of certain situations, situations cloud our eyes and our, our, our thoughts that we thought God has forgotten us or God never loved us. That's why Paul wants us to understand how wide, how big, how deep God's love is. Because as we know God's love, we are uh, kind of being assured that we are deeply rooted in him. Now, we belong to him. Uh, all the promises that he gave us, he will fulfill. So it's, a, it's an important premise. Um, quickly, if I may go back to examples of those um, trying to be by God, like seeking for power or wealth, influence, or doing philanthropy work. The big difference here is that they don't know God. These are fake mimicry, no? a fake copy of who God is. The only way for a person to truly be like God is first to know that he is a son of God, a child of God, and second, that he is loved by God. So what does it tell us about those people? At times, uh, say we have a, a, in a workplace, we have coworkers. Um, they seem good. They're doing charity work. 
Their family looks okay. They're well blessed. And sometimes we, we think, ah, they're okay. You know what? A person could be powerful, could be wealthy, could, be, could have the, like, could command things and make it happen just like God. But he, if, if he is not loved by God, but if he's not son of God, still he needs salvation. He still needs God. Uh, sometimes we, we think, oh, they're okay, and we don't bother to share the gospel to them. We don't bother to, to uh, present to them uh, how it is to be born again. Because they, they look okay. There are manifestations that they are like Christians. But you know what? Only and only if they are children of God and they experience the love of God will their being, their looking like God is, is, you know, uh, is genuine. All other things, it's fake, you know, a fake imitation of who God is. So it's for, important for us to realize that, hey, we become a child of God through Jesus Christ and that God loves us so much and that love will compel us to love him back and obey him and imitate him. So, it is natural to believe that being like God is impossible. However, it is not because first we are his children and if we are his children, we have the characteristic of God-likeness. Uh, in the natural, um, uh, we, we can observe if the grandpa is an artist, then the dad is also in, in, in arts doing some, uh, say, painting or something, in uh, creative arts or whatever form. And then usually the child is expected to be like that. Uh, probably, some are saying it's DNA, it's genes, it's uh, genetics. But it could be nurture as well because the child is being raised up in that environment. So us having the DNA of God, being children of God, okay, having been exposed as to who God is, it's not impossible for us to be like him. So that being part of his family and being loved by him will enable us to uh, to, to imitate him. Okay, uh, next. Uh, God has given us the Holy Spirit. If there is somebody who can represent who God is, it's the Holy Spirit. It's his spirit. Right? Right? And that spirit is given to us. When we are born again, we're filled by the spirit. And that spirit, all the characteristic of God is in that spirit. And that spirit will enable us to bear, to manifest God-likeness. Okay? Uh, in Sunday school, we studied about the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All these are seemingly difficult things to act out just on our own. But because of the Spirit of God, we're not just loving just like the world does. We love just as God does, just as Jesus Christ loves. Uh, We're not just being, um, or we're not just having peace, but we are having peace that transcends all understanding. We're not just... uh, uh, being uh, faithful or being kind or being good just as uh, based on the standard of man but we are being faithful, good or kind in the standard of God. So that in itself, the Holy Spirit growing, bearing fruit in us, manifesting all this is God's way of enabling us to be Christ-like, to be, to be, you know, to be like him to be God-like. Uh, there's a passage that uh, sit in Hebrews about the everything that pertains to life and godliness. I know it's in my outline somewhere. Um, what, what verse is that? 
Everything that pertains, we are given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Or Peter, I think Peter, sorry, not Peter, Peter. Uh, uh, Hebrews is that, is it different? Uh, second Peter, okay, I would like you to, uh, to, to uh, consider that passage. Because a part of that passage is the very reason that we are given everything that pertains to life and godliness is that so that we, can, we could partake in the divine nature. One, one thing. Yeah, can, can you quickly re- read that uh, just so that I don't have to, to look it up? Okay, it, it speaks a lot of things. We're given everything that pertains to life and godliness. Think of the word power there, power dynamite. It pertains to the same power that made, uh, that rose or made Jesus now come back uh, or overcome death, the resurrection power. And likewise, um, everything that pertains to life and godliness, uh, it talks about God, God-likeness. It talks about promises and all other things. The reason for that is so that we could participate in his divine nature. What is his divine nature? What, is, what does it mean, divine nature? Uh, the same phrase is referring to Christ. Uh, in Ephesians 2, it, uh, no, Philippians, when uh, uh, it talks about Christ's humility, that even though he, he has the, this divine nature, he, he, did, he kind of... Um, set it aside, and then uh, came here as man, and then died for a sudden, and this is an example of humility. Divine nature, divine nature pertains to God-likeness. God-likeness, nature of God. So all these are made possible, the Holy Spirit, the promises of God, all provision of God, is that so that we could imitate him. So that means it doesn't give us any excuse that, hey, we cannot imitate God. Because as the verse says, everything that pertains to life and godliness, we are given. Okay? And the reason for that, even promises, even the ability to be like God, everything that Christ did, so that we can participate in the nature, in, in, in God's nature, in the divine nature. So, um, why are we then being commanded to be uh, to imitate God? First is that as we imitate Him, uh, we are accomplishing His purpose. And a good example that is given for us to imitate Him is Christ Himself. Take note that when Christ came, Christ became the depiction of who God is. It says there in, in, in the gospel uh, that whoever sees Christ has like, have, they have seen the Father. And honestly, Christ has showed us a lot of things in how to imitate God. Uh, just to name a few. Uh, in Luke 22, 42, for example, it says there, Christ always seek to do God's will and not his own. God wants us to imitate him through imitating Christ so that what we will be doing is what God wants to do. We became God's instruments in accomplishing his will and purposes. Whatever God wants to happen here on this earth, as we imitate him, he uses us to accomplish this purpose. So just as Christ, we are to be seeking the will of God, not just our own. And if we are to uh, go back, what is the will of God for this generation? It points us again to him building a kingdom for himself, for his glory, and ushering all these lost souls back to him, fulfilling the Great Commission. So one reason that we are 
to imitate God is for he, us to be able to do his will, just like Jesus did. Another example of Jesus Christ in John 17, 4. He says there that Jesus is doing uh, what the Father gave him to do. So whatever it is that Jesus was given, okay, here is your mission, here is your task, here is a checklist of what you'll be doing. Those will be the only thing that Christ will do. Take for example, um, Christ is becoming a rock star when he was healing all this, feeding. Multitudes are with him. If we are a, a human being, probably there's this temptation of, ah, oh, I want to keep doing evangelistic work because all, all these crowds. And, but you know what? God has given Christ, hey, this is what you should be doing. A part of your ministry is to, uh, is to minister to the multitude, but another phase of your ministry is to train these apostles. And then ultimate part of your coming to earth is for you to die on the cross. So there could be other interesting things to do in life. But if we are to be imitators of God by imitating Christ, we should just be doing what God wants us to do. There's a saying, uh, between good and bad, it's easy to choose. Good, bad. But between good and better, or better and best, sometimes it's difficult. If we are to imitate God, we are to be opting for what is best. Because God wants us to live out what is best for us. And us knowing that he loves us, his will for us is always good, pleasing, and perfect. Another thing about Christ. Uh, Christ is doing what he saw the Father is doing. In fact, sometimes uh, at one point Christ said, I am just saying this because this is what I heard from my Father. So what he does is what the Father does, imitating. So as we imitate Christ, we are likewise imitating the Father. How then are we going to truly imitate God? Is it enough knowing that we are children of God, that, Christ lo that uh, Jesus loves us, or God loves us, and that we are given a model? Another way of, that will enable us to truly imitate God as to who he is, is by first knowing him. Okay, the more we know God, the more we know how to act and be like him. Uh, take the case of human relationship. How do we know a person? We ask question, uh, what's your favorite color? Or what's your favorite drink? Or, okay, we talk to the person, right? We ask question, we explore, we... Spend time with the person. So what this tells us is the more we explore the scriptures as to who God is, our concept of who God is grows and grows and grows. Uh, take a case of, uh, of a, a child. A child wants to imitate his father. All he sees is what his father is doing with him or for him. Right? And uh, if we are to, to, to see God, uh, how do I imitate God? Oh, God sees, I, I see God as the one blessing me. I see God as my healer. I see God as my protector. I see God as somebody who loves. I see, everything that God has been doing to you, okay? Or what you're doing together, or what you see God doing. And if we are to to, to focus on what God has been doing for us. We can sum it up as expression of love. Okay? That's why one important or one big chunk of imitating God is walking in love. Because God is love. Okay? Uh, later in the... Uh, uh, a, a big uh, part of, of imitating God is loving others. Loving others. That's why being compassionate, being... Uh, crying out because they are lost, uh, wanting to help. All these are uh, manifestation of imitating God because we see God doing this to ourselves. 
So the more we spend to God, what is God doing to me, to my family, to my community? And then that becomes a picture of who God is, and that becomes who, uh, uh, how we, we, we imitate God. That's, that's just by, by, by observing, by observing um, what he is doing. So for a dad and son, that's just limited to what the son is observing, what the father does. That's why it could be very limited. Ah, just cooking or, or fixing things. I, have, I'm, uh, I, I fix things. I'm like dad. Or probably preparing the table or, or palo, palo. I'm like dad. Or I'm like dad. So th- these are very limited. However, the more we search the scriptures, we, we, we understand that God is not just about somebody who loves us. We understand that likewise God is just, that uh, God is merciful, that God has a plan not just for me, but for the entire mankind. And as we study the scriptures, we study the scriptures, we understand who God is, and all the more, suddenly there's a world that opens up that, ah, doing this is still being like God. Okay, so uh, we imitate Christ. We do what the Father's will is, just like Christ is doing. We do what God is doing. We speak what God is saying. And likewise, we explore as to who he is as we study his word. So God can be manifested true enough in creation, in our spending time with him. But if there is something that truly speaks of the entirety of who God is, the fullness of who God is, it should be the scriptures. So we should likewise be exploring who God is, understanding who God is through his word. By imitating Jesus, we are imitating uh, somebody who will never fail. We may imitate good people, but they are bound to fail. But as we imitate God, as we imitate Jesus, we will never be disappointed. Ah, I put all my trust, all my, you know, I spent all my time studying about this person. I spent a lot trying to imitate this person only to find out that he's a, he's not a good model. Uh, he fails. But if we put our faith in, in God, we imitate who God is, we discover who he is, then we have a model that is always be consistent, the best, perfect model we could ever have. This is why in, in Hebrews, I mentioned Hebrews earlier, um, the, the author of Hebrews is telling us to fix our eyes unto Jesus. Fix our eyes unto Jesus, for he is the author and perfecter of our faith. Okay, it, has, it says here, it has fix our eyes unto Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So Jesus should be our example. Jesus is a representation of who God is, and as we imitate Christ, Christ who is doing what the Father does, doing what the Father tells him to do, and speaking what the Father wants him to to speak about, As we imitate Christ, we are imitating God. We are living out like like God. And imitating God, it says here in in, in Hebrews, uh, it talks about always when there is a reference to Christ, there is this because he died for us. Here he endured the cross. He sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him endures such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Uh, it, is, it is not just a challenge to pursue godliness. 
it says here that there will be opposition. That's why as we imitate Christ, it says here, do not be weary or lose heart. Um, in, in Sunday school, we're talking about um, Samuel. Uh, no, Daniel. Daniel, that's the lesson for, for Sunday. But for adults, we already talked about it. And it says there that Samuel has been doing, or Daniel has been doing the right thing. Uh, nobody can find a fault in him, be it in negligence, Negligence meaning he's not doing things that he should be doing or uh, wrongdoing. That means he is not, he doesn't have any sin of omission, meaning he did not do what he's supposed to do or he did something wrong. Uh, he was asked to do something but he did it wrong or he didn't obey, obey it. So either way, not doing or doing, nobody can find fault in, in Daniel. However, if there is one thing that these uh, scheming fellow servers or servant of, of, of the, the emperor, this weakness in the life of, of Daniel is that he is, his righteousness, his dedication to God. And uh, if we are to, uh, the, the thing here is we can be a, a very good uh, people imitating God, doing all these things, charitable work, being useful. Our works of righteousness, as we do this, as we imitate God, there will be opposition. People will be criticizing us. Um, a very common criticism is, oh, you're doing that. You, why, are you better than us? Uh, people will see you uh, helping somebody. Why, you're more skillful. Say in a workplace, somebody, you're teaching somebody, yeah, you know, you do this and that. Uh, and then people are, oh, he thinks he's so good that he can teach her. People will find fault in uh, everything that we do as we imitate God. There'll be opposition, there'll be criticisms, there'll be uh, cases wherein you will be opposed, you'll be maligned, you'll be called names and all. But through all this, just as Christ have persevered, we are not to go weary. We're not to lose heart. Just as Jesus has endured the cross, a part of imitating God is likewise enduring like Christ. Okay? A part of imitating God is likewise enduring like Christ. So as loved children of God, we must constantly abide in God in order to imitate Him, spend time with Him, study His Word, and we should always be looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Now, uh, what then is the, are, are the consequences? What about, okay, we are called to be people of God. We are called to be children of God. We are here in this time, in this generation, in this church, in this locality. God has a specific purpose for us. He called us to imitate him to do this purpose. The question that I would like to, to throw is, what then are at stake if we are not to imitate him? What will happen if we will not leave out? Oh, we just have to, in a way I'm saved. It's difficult to be like God. It's difficult to be like Christ in this sea of sinful, in this sinful generation, in this wicked generation. It's difficult to live like Christ. In a way I'm saved. What is the consequence then? One. Those who, will, who, who doesn't have the love of God, don't, those who are not children of God, those who don't know God, those who never explored who God is through his word, they will be the one representing God in a negative way. Okay, what do I mean by that? Uh, somebody quests for power, somebody uh, pursue wealth, or somebody wants to be uh, like highly exalted and all this. Uh, somebody will be good in philanthropy. These will be the people that are, oh, just like God. However, there will be fault in them such that they will be misrepresenting God. Um, let me explain. 
for giving, for example, act of generosity. If Christians want to step up being generous, then people will say, oh, these non-Christians are the one who is generous. Their depiction of the generosity of God will be represented by that Christian, by, by that non-Christian. However, this non-Christian is being generous because of ulterior motive, because of a green summer, because of honor, because of whatever personal things. And the impression of those who experience that generosity is, ah, so God's generosity is because there's things attached. That's why um, among Christian uh, ministries, it's, we're, we're careful not to, sometimes we, uh, oh, I, just, uh, I just received Christ, signed up all these things, and went through the Bible study because I want to uh, avail of the medical missions or oh, the clothing that they're giving and the, the, the concept of, uh, of there is always thing attached. So sometimes people could be kind of like hesitant. Oh, should I avail of? Because always there's thing attached. What they have is they represented God in a, in a, in a different way, in a, in a corrupted way. Um, take the case of, of loving, uh, say family members. It's common among Filipinos. Uh, they work really hard sometimes. Uh, have two jobs to send money to the Philippines. Send money because their nieces, their nephew, their brother, their sister, they have to sustain. Even the kids of their, yeah, their nieces and nephews, they sent to college and all this. Whoa, what an act of, of generosity, a very generous person. However, since it is not a copy of, a true copy, of how generous God is, then there's this lavish disregard of whether, where is that money spent? Okay? They are practically giving away their life, funding uh, nieces, nephew, who are wasting their life with the provision that that person is sending. You get the picture? So that, that the depiction of the generosity of God is somehow warped. However, if Christians will step up, people around us will understand that, hey, the generosity of God is within bounds. That you know what? Uh, you have to straighten up before God is able to, to bless you. Uh, you have to do things as a requirement for you to continually avail of, of the goodness of God. So, so the, 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 the point there is, people will be misrepresenting who God is. So there is a need in the world today for people to step up, for Christians to step up, that, hey, this is God. God is kind, God is merciful, but God is just at the same time. Okay? God forgives, but you know what? God really hates sin. He said, just, oh, do whatever you want because I'm forgiving in a way. So unless Christians live out as to who God is, God will be misrepresented. Okay, that's one. Tra- that's one. Uh, that's one um, loss. Uh, that's one um, negative effect. If we are not to imitate God, another. Jonathan Maxwell said, "Whether we like it or not, we have the ability to influence people. We have the ability to influence people, even in your family, especially parents." You have this ability to influence your child. Even among siblings, you know what? Some good things that you do, a brother or sister, you might even be that close, but they observe, oh, I'll, I'll follow that example. You have the ability to imitate, to, to, to influence people. Uh, even at school or in the workplace, you show some certain excellent acts or skills or, oh, I want to be like that. I want to be like, like DJ, or I want to be like, like Darren, who is so good in this and that. We have the ability. God created us as that. We influence people. Problem is, if we don't imitate God, people around us will be copying, not who God is. 
Okay? But a misrepresentation of, of, of who truly God is. Okay? That's just within circles of influence. So what will be the question is our testimony. Oh, God was a devout Christian, supposedly, just like the anointed one, but oh, living a messed up life, okay? bad influence. Take, uh, take it to the family. Kids look up to parents. If parents are to imitate God, we are assured of generations, next generation, becoming likewise faithful, becoming people who are pursuing Christ-likeness. However, whether we like it or not, if we live out the contrary, not imitating God, being a bad example, doing crazy things, kids likewise will, will, will be influenced by those negative things. So what we end up with is a generation of ungodly people, of, of uh, ungodly kids. So um, imitating God is not just for us that we will be able to live out the will of God for our life. Likewise, the salvation of others around us is likewise dependent on it. Whether we imitate God properly, we live out a Christian life properly or not, the salvation of those around us are at stake. Likewise, the next generation of your family, of our spiritual family, this church, is likewise at stake. We mess up, we became lenient a little bit. The next generation will copy that. They'll become more lenient. Okay, we'll uh, stop being a church of discipline, a church of order and all this. The next generation will be even worse. And then uh, fast forward several other generations. That's why churches die. Like they end up, oh, they became social clubs or not a hint of being Christ-like anymore to the point of they're not preaching against sin, like, okay, whatever you want, come as you are, uh, and then go back to the world and do whatever you want. Not a hint of who God is, God that is holy, God that hates sin. That is why um, if we are to look at the rest of the, I, I won't be able to, uh, given, given the time, I won't be able to d- discuss or, or expound on the other parts. That's why it says here, if we are to imitate God, if we are to follow the example of Jesus Christ, okay, love, first we are to love, we have to love others. Love as Christ love, offering himself as a sacrifice. And you know what? All this loving others is pleasing God. It says here, it's a pleasing aroma to God. However, Imitating God is not just about loving others. It's not just like being generous, it's not just being good to people. Okay, verse 3. Verse 3 up to verse 7, it talks about no sexual immorality, no impurity, no greed. God wants to highlight that, hey, imitating like him, you cannot give up holiness. Okay? You cannot be just a good person because you'll be helping, you'll be giving, you'll be generous, and then not living a holy life. Truly imitating God demands a life of holiness. There will be no sexual immorality among you, no impurity, no greed. Okay? Even the way we talk, part of imitating God is having a clean lips, just like Isaiah. Clean lips. No obscene stories, no foolish talk, no coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, there should be thankfulness. Thankfulness. Why thankfulness? Because as we spend time with God, we observe what He is doing. We will realize that everything that He's doing is for our good. So we'll end up thanking Him, thanking Him. So, to, to sum up, imitating God. Is about loving, but likewise about holy living. Um, God has created it such that as we express love to others, as we help others, we feel good. 
Uh, tomorrow we'll be volunteering. After volunteering, packing all this clothes, this food, and, uh, there's this good feeling that, oh, I was able to help. God has used me to help others. However, there's a pitfall of that. Let's not be satisfied to the point of limiting, imitating God to just doing good to others. Okay. Uh, let, let me sound a bit. Sometimes we think, I already gave to missions. I already helped a brother or two. I gave my tithes. I have been generous. So I'm okay. So what happened is, oh, I can mess up a bit. I'm okay. Truly imitating God is not just about giving. Rather, it's likewise about holy living. That's why if there is a character of God that is very prominent, okay, first of course, God is love. No question on that. Huh? If there is one thing that describes God, God is love. However, another thing that describes God is what? Holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy. You can't just be loving and generous and helping. You're very good at people. It should be coupled with holiness. As Christians, let us not make all the blessing of being able to help uh, an excuse for us not to live a holy life. What do I mean by that? Let's say, that, oh, I, I'm already okay, I pay my tithes, then I should, I, I didn't have, oh, God can understand, I can mess up a bit or two. No. Truly imitating God is both God as a loving God. And likewise, God as holy. That's why Paul has to point out, imitate God, love others, be like Christ, who offered himself as a sacrifice, a pleasing aroma to God, but it doesn't end there. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, greed, no coarse joking, all this. Okay, those are not a part of you. Those things is never a part of being like God. So as we, you know, as we close, um, let's just, just uh, let's just meditate on these things. We're, if ever uh, you're still in the position we're in, um, I can never be truly generous just as God is. Uh, you have bills, you have all this. You know what? Part of being like God is the uh, unlimited resource. God is able to make you generous by first blessing you. You want to, to go back to, uh, to, to the first Peter. Everything that pertains to life and godliness, God has given. Okay. Again, I'd like to remind you, you are a child of God. You are created in his image. You are loved by God. You are given the Holy Spirit. You are given Christ as model. You are given the scriptures to obey. Everything God has prepared for us for us not to fail in imitating him. We can be like God and be an example to everybody, both in generosity and in holiness. Amen.